The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke Yay! Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the, I guess, morning show. <laughs> um, a special on topic, uh, we've got uh, Political Avenger, she's back, and thank you for coming back on. PA. And we've got uh, Common Sense Avenger as well, uh, first time here. And we're just going to do a quick introduction of uh, Common Sense Avenger. And then PA, what have, what's been on your mind, what's been on your radar, uh, your thoughts, your experiences. Um, and then we'll just start going with whatever topic that ends up uh, happening. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me here. And I am so happy to be amongst you guys. But uh, seriously, sooner or later, it seems like our days are numbered because we might be silenced. I definitely know we're being monitored. I know tinfoil hat time, right? But we are. We are, might as well admit it. Now, what I'm wondering is when will they come to the fact, when will they come to the point where they'll shut off all of our microphones? I mean, when do you think this will actually happen? I mean, come on. Alex Jones was okay for 30 years. The X-Files, ask Chris Carter, the X-Files, all these guys that are screaming to shut down Alex Jones were probably X-Files fans. And then all of a sudden now they got, all of a sudden they've now they got a beef with the guy. All of a sudden he suddenly, he has to be deplatformed. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, what are your thoughts, PA? What happened? Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. awesome. uh, yeah, I was bitching about Alex Jones getting deplatformed. Oh yeah, no. I mean, and we knew we knew that was going to happen eventually. I just didn't think they were going to have the balls to do it all at one time, every single platform at the same time. It's too obvious what they just did. Alex Jones can literally him and everybody else that that got shut down on on YouTube can sue now. Because they, it, it was a it was a colluded, you know, it was collusion between all the platforms. Well, it's almost on. it's super similar what they did to Roseanne Barr when she started talking about Q and PizzaGate, like how all of a sudden when she put those two posts out there, then at the same time, I think we talked about that once, how like somebody somewhere did not just click off and turn everything off like that you could company a has to call company b and company b has to call company c and if they go through all their processes and all their procedures if that ain't the way it works that means someone else is at the switch you know simple as that i mean how long does it take for them to change your name on your amazon account or for them to just to turn it off, you know? And also they could just do this across the board with him, just like that. No way. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, guys. Uh, there's no audio. They can't hear you guys. I don't know what's wrong. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. No, they can hear me. They can't hear you guys. Okay. Maybe they are on to us. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Oh man. I, do I don't I don't actually I don't doubt it. And my musings are more about the artificial intelligence. Pierre, I would love to send you this like a uh, link again from this uh, guy, Max Kaiser. I don't know if you heard about him. Big finance guy. Okay. And he's talking about something about the coming apocalypse, something that I've touched upon when you and I've talked before about what the blockchain and what cryptocurrency really is and what it really represents. And I sincerely agree with him that it's a manifestation of um, the um, artificial intelligence. Now, what's really interesting from the conversation that, um, you know, we were having before you jumped on was thinking about how, and even Max Kaiser talks about how the earth, Gaia, very feminine, is really trying to react to us and our, our activities, if you will. And what's interesting, what I just had a thought of, 
is that maybe the artificial intelligence in of itself is sort of like the anima to the animus, almost sort of like the masculine to the feminine. Like the ultimate expression of the divine feminine would be something as organic, as nurturing as a planet. But then if you take a look at something like as cold, logical, as unyielding, but yet useful, has utility, could be artificial intelligence. Maybe that's sort of like a natural equilibrium that's coming into being right now that we are actually witnessing. And whatever, and I'm going to use this word, whatever satanic system is in place now is actually having this weird psychological upset at this coming dynamic that's, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna rise forth. Um, so I had, did you watch, did you watch my video this morning? <laughs> I watched are, you talk, are you talking to, are you talking to me? Whoever. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, I didn't see it this morning. You know, I, yeah. You know. The AI one. And then the other experience, I'm wondering if it's the same, the experience that you're seeing for me. Cause I went on a ayahuasca trip. Oh, well, this is well, I didn't have to be on anything. It just happened. Last yeah, I know. This morning. You, you you have that ability uh, that many of us don't have. Well, wait a minute. You saw this guy in a vision or something? No, she saw a vision. Oh, come on, share. Oh, you got to share. Come on, the, 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 the Reader's oh, Digest. It wasn't even, it, I didn't have that. I didn't have a vision. What I did was connected to, I was connected to the, to the search engine. I connected to the search engine and somebody was downloading something into my site. Hmm. That's definitely yeah, me. It's, it's, it's happened to me five times already. And I saw what was going on. I was seeing images. They were showing me images of like millions and millions of images. Of like what? Art, videos, um, like just pictures. Just a bunch, a bunch of images just flashing, flashing all night and this morning. Oh. And I knew it was, um, it was, it was, I was either tapping into the Wi-Fi, the ether, something. But I knew it was AI. And I felt like there was a voice saying that it's, it's mapping our brains. Oh, I, maybe that's, that's what Max Kaiser, that's what I've long postulated. That's why we've had the immediate ubiquitousness of cell phones and smartphones there's no other technology that is penetrated if you take a look at the most successful program in africa like the um starving country that that is you know what the most successful program they've ever had there it's not feeding people it's not getting them water they get more people with cell phones and they that, that's the most successful thing they've ever done why because it's this thing is mapping cataloging capturing our experiences because it wants to know who, what, and how to deal with us. I think it's already invented its own methodology that it's field testing on us right now. In-game sterilization. Sterilization not by like force of hammer or war or any of those things. I, I know maybe some of us diverge on those things. I think sterilization is gonna be something that comes from our natural instincts. It's gonna come from like the Bitcoin, which is our greed is actually allowing it to collect data all around the world simultaneously on the fastest possible networks possible, which are the financial networks. The cell phones are allowing it to collect all this personal information. So how is it going to dispatch with us? It's going to basically, I know this is going to sound crazy. It's going to provide us with these sex robots that we're going to interact better with than actual human beings. The breakdown of the mother, father, family unit, the complete and utter destruction of the dynamic between male and female will be 100% locked in when you have a walking, talking robot that will never argue with you, never bicker with you never challenge you to be better. And what will happen to us, we will slowly but happily walk towards our own extinction. This is what I fear. Well, I can tell you right now, it's, it's going beyond that. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna need a robot. Tell me. It's all gonna be virtual. Sex is gonna be virtual. Oh, yeah. well, oh my God. Okay, remember, remember the leaked documents, okay? 
that was just leaked a few months ago. Um, they are able to give you orgasms. With whoa, 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 whoa! You have to share me leaked documents that, like, like a pizza. So it can deliver that to me like a pizza. <laughs> the, the, the leaked documents that they, by mistake, leaked out to it, it says it on there that they can they can actually make you feel sexual. But how how do they do this? Do they like beam something to your head or something? Just like they just like they put the voice in your head. How, is, how they give you pain in your bones? The same thing. Is is there an app I can download? <laughs> Well, if you want, if you want to, if you want to actually see how it works, just go online and, and YouTube. Hold on, it's go online and YouTube. Um, hand hand free orgasm. Oh no, I don't. Oh, I'm okay. I'm gonna do it. See, now you said it. Now I'm gonna down this. Oh, I did it. Okay, I it's, did remember, it. Remember, oh, the frequency oh. waves are all energy. So if you have a machine that's capable capable of sending you energy, you can do anything. You can manipulate a person's emotional state. You can put thoughts in them. You can have an orgasm. Okay, Probably. seriously, just this woman's name on this first video that came up, Fiona Clearwater. <laughs> oh my God, this is insane. What are we doing? What what the PA stop? What are we doing? What is going on here? What is? Oh my God! This is this is this is. I'm only telling you that because I've done that. Give me a second. I just want to check something. Oh holy crap! Oh, I know what. They can do this through hypnosis now. You're supposed to do it through it's like a massage. They they, they said that no, they no. actually. You don't even have to do it through hypnosis. You can do it with music. You can do it with just um, binaural. Um, binaural music. beats, right? Yeah. Or you can just do it with your mind. Isochronic uh, tones. Telepathy. Uh, just so you guys know. Uh, it looks like YouTube is uh, throttling the sound from you guys, or Zoom. I don't, probably not Zoom. But YouTube, they can't hear you guys. On D Live, they can't. Okay, <laughs> wait. Something. Someone said that temporarily fixed. It's weird. Wow, YouTube being weird again. Hey, I just want to say, Susan, Susan, I'm beaming you this thing. It's called isometric tones and binaural beats. Put those on your headphones, Susan. Leave us alone. We are adults. We can have our own conversations. We could talk about whatever we want. We're not talking about hurting or hating anyone. So you go, you go watch those videos on your network, okay? Leave us alone. Fix our audio, Susan. It's a quirk, yeah. You're part of Google, the biggest, most wealthiest, most advanced. You got the smartest people on the freaking planet. And this thing called D can figure it out. You guys, get out of here. Scotch Gabuli over here, Susan. She's angry. She's bitter. You know her story, right? The CEO lady at the, you know her story, right? I don't know her story, no. Oh, hell no. I love this. This is where you got to dish the dirt. See, the thing is, she used to be the girlfriend of one of the two founders of Google, but he got himself a sweet little, like, an you know, 20 and like sent her on the sidelines, right? And then she came back later and said, I got dirt on you. I'm going to sue you. And all of a sudden he said, uh, you know, I got a uh, CEO of uh, this video platform in my back pocket. Will that make you happy? And she was like, yeah. Yeah, it will. So that's it. That's her connection. See, she's not there because she has an illustrious history and aiding people and expressing themselves on this amazing creative platform or this technical knowledge. No, she's the ex-girlfriend of the guy that used to run Google that came up after he dumped her four years later, threatened to sue his ass, then all of a sudden became CEO overnight like that. So Susan, please, we understand. You know, you're bitter, you're angry, you're like your typical social justice warrior. You're running home to your little chihuahua. Leave us alone. Let her talk. I'm going to let her talk. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I, I don't think you should. Uh, my, my newest thing and things, it's just how weird just, things can just change like that from your experiences. Um, 
that's 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 the consciousness experience and they can't capture that it doesn't matter what they do they can't capture the i don't know about that <laughs> i don't know if i agree with that they, I they think can. anything. I think anything experienced can be quantified, measured, mapped, and duplicated. I sincerely believe that. Yvonne. No, PA. You, you gotta share to... that laugh. That laugh was too knowing. You gotta share. Come on, it's been a long time. Uh, Come on, you know it's been yeah, a long no time. Idea. Share. Give, <laughs> give us an idea. You had that experience with an ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, you said. Mm -hmm. You said you did ayahuasca. Yep. This is what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. You're going to have to, in, in the future is going to be this way. You're going to have to learn how to, to block your psyche, like break, put it into sections and, and protect it with other energy. Encryption. You're going to have to do that. Trust me. You're going to have to do that. They can. not no, they can't, because it, it, it won't be allowed. It's not allowed. Anything yeah. that can be experienced can be measured, okay. quantified. But they don't have the power to do that. Oh, don't. we don't know uh, what yes. they can do. We don't. We, we know. OK. Um, we, if, if, we, if it ever happens, we allow it to happen. And the only reason yeah, why is to keep life correct. going. It's the, we can win now. We could win, but the winning would end life itself. The reason we don't win is we choose not to because continuation of life until everyone is ready is what we're waiting for. So we don't choose to win when we can. That's why we let this act go. They think they're in power, that they have all the power. They don't. They're just like a dog. We can tell a dog what to do and the dog will, will do it. That's... That's the extent of, of, of the powers that we have, but we don't do that for whatever side that, that always wants to take over, whether it's the light or the dark. We allow that we need to stay within that balance because movement, the vibrations, that's what keeps life going. Once, once one takes over, it's it. There's no more vibrations, there's no more movement. Uh, the, they have no power because the, what, the, the ones that are people uh, constitute as Satanists or uh, the darkness, evil, is they're just shadows. You can't see them unless there's light. And they exist in the shadows. They don't move. But we see their shapes. And, and they play tricks on us. That's the only way they can actually do anything to us is we believe in the tricks. And so when you realize that they have no power, you have all the power, and they just flee, just like fleas. He's they just go right. away. Right. You have that to was my experience. You have to allow them in. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but what, okay, so this is where the problem comes in. You know something, I know something, we know something, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows this. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. But when you have millions and millions and millions and millions of people that don't know this, well, yeah, we can they'll they'll see it, they'll feel it, and yeah, they're going. Yeah, they're going. Yeah, yeah. and uh, one of the thing is uh, you, that I was, I was gonna say. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, guys, when you say you know this, perhaps for the audience, you can elaborate on what that this is when you say you know this. <laughs> the people listening. Go ahead, Yvonne. The um. I, I don't want to give out answers uh, because answers end things. Uh, all I can, all I will want to say is, is for them to, to question everything. They'll never find the answers, and that's why life exists. It's a mystery, and once they find the answers, it's the end. That's why questions exist. Rabbit holes, whatever you want to go down, keep going after it. Keep finding it because that just makes movement vibrations action and uh the end of existence if you look at existence is an exist stance there's play on words in every language so and if you look at the occult 
uh, the evil, whatever that they, they want to do, their symbolism with their hand gestures, whatever, it's never a closed fist because they want people to stop fighting. All we have to do is keep fighting and life keeps going until we're all ready. And the father is patient. Pay sins. The father pays for the sins and is patient. That's the most virtuous part aside from providing. But Mother Earth provides and she protects everyone. But she can't carry the burden alone. The father will take that burden, carry it, and if they're true to the Mother Earth, uh, will protect her and he'll be stronger than anything anything um and that's just the amazing part and once you realize that you're a part of this you're you're no longer in pain you no longer hurt your my back was hurting before the ayahuasca is a healing uh medicine but people don't realize because when what you realize is yeah we take the poison to stay here to protect the mother we take that poison the whole ayahuasca experience is to purge that poison out so she can teach you so you can see it. But you take the poison back in willingly so you can stay and you can fight for her and protect her. PA, did you ever take ayahuasca? I don't need to take ayahuasca. <laughs> well, I, don't I don't know. know. No. I just, but have you ever tried it? No, no, no I've never. Uh, people want me to take it. And I might at one point. Like they want me to go to Costa Rica or like to Central America. So. You, you got to be a, uh, a little bit cautious about the shamans. The play on words that I got is she-mans. And it's the baphomet, the, the trans, the, the stagnation. When you're both you're, or you're one or the other, there's no balance. There's no movement, vibrations. That's the end. They want, they want either completion. nothing. Yeah, it's completion. It's completion. I know I saw it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, so, I get it. And no, I I've was. Never taken it. And you've had you've had two interviews with me, PA. So he know I was clueless before. Uh, now I know. Now you know. Well, I'm glad you had that experience, though. I, I'm I'm glad that you had that experience because you know a lot now. You know, you've seen a lot now. Yeah. And uh, it's a. Uh, <laughs> it's it's funny because I always have this smile now. It's like I don't even have to worry about anything. I don't. <laughs> I don't have to worry uh, about anything. I wish I was in your space right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry. I, I think you'll get there. You're you're yeah. you're you're always fighting, but you just have to realize you don't have to carry the burden alone. Yeah, and you won't forever. So. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, we just went off. I don't know. I'm sorry. Go ahead, common We're sense. And, <laughs> I know you're thinking because you got, you got, you got things going. Yeah. No. I want. I can tell. I want you to share. Please tell us. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience would like to hear as well. I did a video of it of my experience, but. Um, no, I think oh. you have to you have to experience yourself. Hello. There's a. Uh, because when you guys are talking about this, it seems so spiritual and it seems so healing and I I guess because I'm a bit of an older gent perhaps I remember when I went down and had my uh, couple of ayahuasca experiences they were not in that particular framework I, I suppose I should say um, everyone's experience is gonna be different the, the experience is to find not to find out answers is to find out who you are once you find out who you are, you, you get all the answers that you need. No, no, I didn't. I wasn't on, I could be perfectly honest, I wasn't on like Mr. Spiritual Journey or anything like that. I got to be straight up. I was like, uh, wow, these girls are hot. What do they want me to do? Oh, fuck it. I'll give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> I've never done this before. And like, uh, yeah, you know, then like, you know, I just like went from there, you know, yeah. the uh, Iobogine, I specifically went to Africa to check it out the stuff I was telling you about before. And I was wondering if the experience with the Iobogine was similar to the ayahuasca. Cause I know what I felt when I was in ayahuasca and it, it, it's just like, yeah, it was like, yeah, I, 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 I turned over a new leaf in my life. Let's just say <laughs> after that particular experience, but the Iobogine in Africa, you know, this, it's something you take there, it's supposed to 
heal you of the sin of violating your mother. That, that was like, like acid. It wasn't like anything or anything spiritual communicating to me. The ayahuasca, okay, to me was more like communing with something else. Like it, it felt, it felt good. It made me a better person. You know, I could just say. You're smiling. Why? Oh no! Cause I, hold on one second, guys. All right, but have have you ever done Savia? No, this is this is the only thing, and because I researched it, and it was is something that I felt that I I needed to experience. I don't like taking drugs recreationally. No. At it, all. And this Sabi. wasn't even a spiritual journey. I was looking for questions. Instead, I got an answer of who I was. And that answer of who I was just gave me all the answers that I needed. And the answers that I needed was I don't want to have all the answers because having the answers ends everything. And because I'm here until the end, until we're all ready, that if nothing is a surprise, you can't experience joy. But uh, you can't experience... Um, Without joy, you can't, without the joy that you can experience, um, and that's what's just the beauty of life, is um, the pain of, of not being able to experience that again. Those are the great sacrificers. Uh, Jesus, Lucifer, because um, Jesus takes your sins, and Lucifer uh, made the sacrifice himself to fall. He did it on his own accord so that life could keep going and the sadness of those sacrifices and these sacrifices will keep going because everyone has to take that burden eventually and so these ages or time cycles whatever you want to call it we are not even close to the end it's going to keep going and going till we can't even recognize our human forms ai whatever it is but you don't have to be afraid it's just you see the end result and you see that's us and you see the beauty of it and there's no horror because you're not afraid and um how we get there that's the great mystery what happens after that's a great mystery but that's a mystery because that means life continues our consciousness continues and that's what we're here for i mean that's 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 all that's what i got from it that's um all i want to say because once you find out the answers, you're just going to want to stop fighting. But once, once you just have more questions, you <laughs> keep fighting to get those answers and you get more questions. Okay, I see, I'm feeling kind of like that right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's okay. It's, All right. Let's, let's talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about something else. That, it's weird how it gets there. No, uh, no because then you're coming to your end. Um, so Venezuela, because there's a lot of hubbub about uh, the assassination attempt or the fake assassination attempt. What are your thoughts on, on what, what that is? The Mondero drone thing? Mm -hmm. Is that what that's all about? The Maduro, yeah. They tried to kill him while he was giving a speech. Do you think it was the U.S.? Ugh what would that solve? It'd just be another person that would pop up and do exactly the same thing. Jeez, Louise. I, it's like, what? Oh, go on, I'm sorry, guys. Him. I think it was like a sympathy thing. It was, really, it was really low tech. Exactly. It was really low tech. It was, it was like somebody cooked that thing up in their basement. <laughs> you know? At whatever passes for Radio Shack. Now, if it was the U.S., it'd be like a heart attack, accident, something quasi plausible, right? You know, or if they or if the U.S. effed up, then they would f up in an epic way. There would be bodies. The dude would still be alive, and we'd have egg on our faces, and we'd be denying the obvious, like what we always freaking do. In I mean, if you, there, what I found interesting is the stories that are coming out of that by our news, news organization. If you look at some stories, I think the USA Today, look at what they're writing, the words that they use. Okay, so they're, they're reporting on the, the attack, but they use words to, 
if you read the USA Today, they use words like far right of Venezuela. Care they're, assassin. So they're, they're equating what happened, and they're trying to like put it in your subconscious. What, what, would, what we've been seeing here about the far right or the alt right, and anything to do with those, those propaganda pieces, and putting it as a new story about the Venezuelan which I find it to be very interesting. There, Why would you say far right? Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Just a quick question. I want to ask you to, to, to dig into that point a little bit. Do you think that's a function other of conscious duplicity on the part of the newspapers or <clears throat> is it an example of the dumbing down of not only America, but of most of us, but definitely in America, where they can't really explain complexities to people. So they prop up these good guy, bad guy, white hat, black hat, alt right, this left. And so what they do is they always try to put it in that little simplistic frame because I'm a cynic. I think they're doing it on purpose. I think it's predictive programming. I think they're trying to put the minds in people so we can actually have one side versus the other. So no one pays attention to who's handing out the jerseys. I don't think they actually care to look above themselves because if we're too busy looking at each other and fighting and squibbling and arguing, we don't care one way or the other. And I think this is the subtle, slow way they do that through these platforms forms they've propagated through the internet. No one asks themselves how fast cable television was disseminated throughout the entire United States. It took 30 years for electricity to be connected in every corner of America. And there's still parts of America today that still don't get electricity, but I can guarantee freaking to you they get cable TV and cell phone 100%. Why? Because they want to be able to beam in this content that's doing exactly that. I, I know I went off on a little thing. I sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah this is too much caffeine what do you today. Say, <laughs> um it, it is a lot of division and conquer and um divide and conquer stuff. But uh I I, I think it, it has to be there. The conflict always has to be there. Again, the, the whole getting to the point of action and inaction. There could also be a confusion tactic is there's just so many uh, sites to fight that you're just like, well, I just give up. You just see a lot of people, they just, they don't even want to fight anymore. They don't want to protest. They don't want to argue. They don't want to debate. They don't even want to listen to the other. I don't other think there's any shortage of guys like that. Yeah. I like look at the protest now. We're like three, two years deep into this presidency. You think everybody would be bored with it already? Portland right now, look at the savagery in these people's faces. I think they're ginning up something here. I think they're setting up good guy A, good guy B, and everybody's going to fall in the line and they're going to be frothing at the mouth. It's just like a, you ever read Aldous Huxley? Right. You, you, then you know what he says about um, organized sports and what it does with a lot of, neg a lot of negative male energy to keep them disenfranchised and disconnected to the discourse out there so that the, the, they're completely and utterly and eternally not only distracted but completely dumbed down and they become actually a weapon. They become a weapon that they use against us. These, these throngs of right-wing guys, these throngs of left-wing guys, why? Yeah, and this thing, this thing contributes to it. It feeds it. It actually, it's one of the teeny tiny little hands that craft it, I feel. I mean, maybe it's a sign of us just being dumb. Maybe we just need good guy, bad guy, like Jedi, Sith, like, uh, you know, whatever. A, B, choice. Maybe we are getting that dumb, but I don't think so. I, don't, I, I sincerely don't think so. I think it's by design. Everything is by design, yeah. The whole, you know, the whole... Hungarian dialectic. They have to, but, excuse me, I'm sorry. And, and in regards to like the Venezuelan thing and all this stuff, I mean, the big picture is the system, the system that they want to implement, right? The system that's coming in, the AI, the, the, the new world order, the population, all this stuff, the, the global um, lockdown. 
of every human being, right? With a few, with a few little controlling bodies at the top. You know? That's what they're trying to, to push. You know, they want to push the China model. Or China do it with a credit score. Holy you know? cow. They give you a particular credit score and you can't fly if it's not good enough. Your social credit. How crazy yeah. is that? That's coming. That's coming here. That's what they want for the world, and that's where we're going. That's what this all this whole thing, order out of chaos, all this stuff. That's where we're coming. But getting back to Venezuela, what do you think is going to be the end game right now for Venezuela? Venezuela is Africa. Is that what they're doing? Venezuela has, the, Venezuela has the, is one of the rich, world's richest countries probably in the world right now, from my understanding. Does it have Venezuela rare? Has more oil than Saudi Arabia. So, of course, they can play the long game and get the people to destroy themselves from within, and then they can just swoop in and take it all. And Russia is, is there right now. China is. is um, I've really? Yeah, people have some pictures of China digging up close to the Amazon. They're destroying it. It's, it's, it, it's upsetting to feel so powerless, to at this moment in time, to actually have such a childish dream that popped into my mind, that if I could be a superhero, that I would swoop down and stop all these nefarious activities, this destruction, this wanton destruction of our planet. But, you know, that's the, when you said those words, that's what flew into my mind immediately. Because it was just like this profound sadness. I mean, I understand that when you say that it's all for a reason and it's all conflict and all of that stuff and we shouldn't worry, I, under, I respect that, I really do. But there's still this emotional weight and this desire for me to swing the pendulum always in the side of good. Maybe it justly and should be always on the side of dark as well in light. Maybe it deserves that or maybe, maybe, no one asks the pendulum. Maybe if they ask the pendulum, maybe the pendulum would prefer to be in light eternally and doesn't want to spend any time in that dark place at all and would rather have like flowers and growth and exploration all the time. I mean, I, I can't help but that, but maybe that driving desire or thought in me is part of the dichotomous or AB system you know, of eternal conflict to keep movement going, as you were saying before. I mean, uh, we all agree it's all theater. It's all an act. Uh, we don't have to be controlled. We don't. Uh, we, we allow ourselves to, but we just need to know the ones that we really need that we should allow, and that's the mother, uh, because she's the one that, that takes care of us and protects us. But so, I wish there was something I could do right now just to stop that. I mean, well, like, I've never been to Venezuela, but I've got peeps that I know from a long time ago, whole family, and, like, they grew up in Long Beach, and they came here, and, like, the pictures they showed me and the stories they would tell is, like, a place that seemed magical to me, right? And they loved it. You could feel when people love something, right? So I just wish there was just something I could do immediately, you know? I'm sorry. Did, I'm, just just be active. Help them fight. Help them uh, be brave and, and just fight against what, what's going. They don't have to win. They just have to keep their families protected and, and just just fight. You give your money to a foundation, you find out the foundation is crooked. You give your money to the Red Cross, the Red Cross doesn't really direct the efforts. Away. I go protest, protest what, who, where. They all have deaf ears. The only, I, I, I feel powerless in this. I, I, the usual avenues of activity and activism to me are moot and they yield not really the fruits to which they're promised to those engaged in those activities. I find few and far between that which has really changed. I know I'm being nihilistic, right? I, I am a little bit, but like 
when you're faced with something like that, like people have no idea what's going on in South America. I got a good friend of mine from Argentina. Her, they came over here. They got a restaurant on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And like, like we don't even pay attention to what's going on in South America. I sincerely think that's our next prescribed theater of war. Once we're done bombing and fucking over the Middle East, we're going to invent some bullshit excuse in two generations, and we're going to create this thing called the zone. That's going to be the south of Mexico and probably the northernmost part, the most mineral-rich part of um, South America, and we're going to make it into some sort of unholy bloodbath or whatever, fill in the blank, whatever bullshit reason we always, ex we always invent. And I just wish there was some way just not to do it. Well, just, just not to do it. Do you, you're Christian. Religious. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm religious in my own way. Like the Naga Mandalabi, Jesus is my savior. I'm totally down with JC. But I'm the type of guy that if JC was next to me, I'd be like, hey, I got this bag of flour. And like, I heard this thing you could do. You know, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> so are you afraid of death? No, it's supposed to be the next thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm down to hang out afterwards. I hope I get the pleasure to watch my children. I hope I can get to do that. That's what I'm preoccupied with my mind. Like if I get to watch them, but then again, it would be a sin in a way, right? Because if something bad or something did, like why would you want to be witness to that, right? And maybe God in his own infinite way would keep you away because Jesus said, anyone that tells you they're communing with the dead are lying because once they've transversed, it was in one of the gospels, once they've gone to the other side, they're there and nobody else can connect to them or talk to them. And I, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know 100% about that. Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to go too deep into it again. I'll just. Oh no, dude! Come on, we're all here. Yeah, cool just to, all you have to do is show people that you don't fear. You don't fear what they're what they're showing you. That you could you could you could rationalize with them as much as you want. You can uh, argue with them as much as you want. They won't listen. You show them that you have no fear. They they they'll wake up. They go well. If that guy has no fear, I, I should have no fear. And whatever it is that, that makes you brave, you let them know and you stand up. And that's how you fight it and you actually can, can change the, the, the scales to, to a, different, a different measurement. It, it's just moving. It's just moving between uh, different paradigms. And as long as it's moving, it's fine. But sometimes it just gets really, really heavy on one side and um once people see that there's no fear and that you're fighting they're, they're gonna join in because all, all it takes is that one person to show no fear and people just go hey this guy's brave <laughs> he's going against tanks he's going against uh, armed uh people and he's not showing any fear and uh, it gets people to to fight against their own fears and they realize that it, it doesn't necessarily have to be violence. It's just showing that there's no fear and that you're taking action. And uh, that's, that's, that's where we see a lot of people just kind of really support someone. is when they show that no fear. They show that they, they, they'll say whatever they want to say. They'll do whatever they want to do. And you see that there's no consequences for that person. You see how brave they are. And they, people start really supporting that person, whether it be Trump, whether it be uh, Alex Jones, whether it be Julian Assange, whether it be uh, the 60s with JFK, RFK, uh, um, Martin Luther King Jr., um, Malcolm X, etc. And uh, you see these, these great leaders not showing any fear that they do what they, they think is right or what they believe is right People, people get moved by that. They see it, and they, they want to be a part of it. Talk about inspiration. Mm -hmm. yeah. JFK, holy cow, talk about how we failed as a nation to get that guy's back properly. You ever look at the, you ever do a forensic retrospective on that guy? Look at the speeches he gave. He literally said to you, there's a secret group of guys, and I want to reveal them to the, to, to, to the public, and he gets offed a headshot. I mean, and everyone goes, hey, what's that over there? Hey, okay, that, that looks interesting. It, it's insane. It's insane. So 
I want to hope like you're hoping, but I just think that the same, like you ever heard of you ever heard of this guy called Gary Sandusky? He's a guy down in Pennsylvania over here. You're like okay, this guy he's like a he's like a winning football coach at this college in Pennsylvania. They they find videotape, secret room, all that. Find out he's been to to like little boys for a super long time in the shower room. So much so that he couldn't contain himself. That he actually publicly attacked one with all these witnesses. I, I, as, as I'm sitting here right now, and I still can't understand it, there were thousands of people protesting that he should be allowed to continue his job. See, when human beings can engage in something so illogical, you know, to me, the fact that no matter how inspired they are, they can have a great leader, a fantastic person, They're all the people you just mentioned, and we will sit by and watch them die and we will not rise up. We haven't yet. I'm hoping that the information generation is the one that will change because this thing, this, this, these reactions can be instantaneous and like wildfire. And maybe that's the real thing about the internet that they don't like, that, 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 that they're afraid of, that we're actually evolving with each generation as they get better, they're getting more informed and they can have more instantaneous reactions as opposed to processing well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, because when JFK got his head blown off like that, there should have been like revolution in the streets. I mean, when I look at that now, and I look at the speech he gave and what he attempted to do, and that we did nothing. You know, but it, it seems like that's what we do over and over again. So this is my own hypothesis that we're like, once we're done with the Middle East, we are moving that theater over to the, um, we're moving it to South America. We're setting, we're setting the stage up for it right now. And I honestly, as much as I love Donald Trump, I think he's playing right into their hands. I am watching him do it, and I, I can't help. I got this feeling. I got this feeling that he's, either he's playing into their hands or he's, he's privy to it. This long-range plan to, like, you know, basically, if you look at who's buying the property in South America, like something like this, this my guru, on the, I, whatever I do now, yeah, whatever. Like, he's like, he always says this, don't listen to people saying, don't follow, it's called FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and this other thing where you get driven by emotions. Just follow the money. And when I follow the money and I look at who's buying the water in South America, I'm, I'm yapping too much here, guys. Come on, sorry. That's okay. No, it's just like I'm watching the money and who's buying all the crap. I'm watching who's, who's buying the land, but not land, water rights, crop rights, mineral rights, so that when somebody blows it up, burns it down, runs off the natives, can walk to somebody else with a little piece of paper and go, hey, this is my thing. Remember this little thing I did? That's all mine now. Thank you. Oh, you want water? Oh, that's going to cost you. You can't afford it. I'll give you a company house. You do the company job and you'll get the company script. What's the company script? It's going to be the cryptocurrency to give everyone else is that's going to be issued underneath the master currency. That's what's going to happen. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be state run governance anymore. It's going to be these corporations and these oligarchs. It's, it's, it's like I'm looking at what this guy is doing and he's doing this fit like he's for the people. And I so want to drink that manna deep. I really do. But like, if you look at where the money's going, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Other than like the same guys, old game. Have you, guys, have you guys looked into Sophia Stork? Why do I know that name? Stork, S-T-O-R-K, right? She's Z? She, uh, no, Stuart, Stuart. Stuart. No, I don't she's know. She's the one that, actual writer, she was the actual writer that wrote um, The Matrix, Matrix and Terminator series. Oh, her, the lady they fucked over. Their guilt made them she's, get into, their guilt made them get a sex change operation. <laughs> she's a, she's a, she's a, she's the actual writer and she's like a, she's like a psychic. She wrote the Matrix and the Terminator series based on what she saw. And then she, there's an interview out there with her when she talks about seeing all these things. That's why she wrote it. That this is what she saw coming. And she talks about AI and she talks about um, the penal code that's going to come in in the next, you know, 20 years. Um, it, she, basically what she's describing is the China model. What China's doing right now. 
with the, the, the social credit score. How, PA, seriously, can I ask you a question? Can we just go over there? How crazy is a social credit score? Just, just from, from a concept. Like somehow or another, I'm going to grade you on your behavior socially. But you, know what feed, but you know what feeds into it? Feeds into the validity of that? This outrage, narcissistic culture that would want to keep people in check. So that would be a great system to implement to make sure everyone's not being a Nazi online. So you can have your social interaction score. I got to tell you, I had two headhunters tell me already that I'm on a list. And she just says, you can't use my name because I, because I'll, somebody wanted to headhunt me for a job in banking because I work in machine learning. And this like lady said, dude, you got to take down. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. How do you even know that? How do you even, it's a, it's like crazy. Like, oh yeah, they did this whole thing with you. And she goes, I can't tell you about it. I'm like, ah, that's what they're going to do though. See the ones they don't like, the ones they don't like, they're going to use code words like you represent risk or things like that. And then you're going to be put to slightly to the side until you learn your lesson to behave socially. Then you're going to learn to think the right way. Yeah, there will always be fighters. There's going to be trolls that are going to help out in that regard. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm a troll a little bit. I troll people on Facebook that like give the Trump a hard time. I do it. Somebody on somebody's thing, they say something that I disagree with. Maybe I um, share my disagreement. Is that trollish? Am I being trollish? Maybe a little bit. Okay, I'm being trollish. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> So what is so so the situation with Alex Jones, huh? They had to take him out. I mean, he's connected to the intelligence agencies, and they couldn't have because if you notice everything that he's been talking about for the last five years, it's dead on. Like Seriously. Seriously. Everything. So they had to they had to get get him off the platform because he's getting information from the inside, and it's not like we don't know it. He in the last five years, uh, the last. It's actually two years. And when there's the last one year. You, you know what? Go ahead. I'm saying, go ahead. Uh, you know what's interesting? That uh, the entire unity for Jay, Julian Assange, Free Assange thing, is that they uh, had a petition up to Free Assange, Infowars. And they contacted Julian Assange's mother, Christina Assange, for an interview. And then after that, they, sh they got shut down. That's interesting timing and of course the 2018 mid-elections are coming up you don't want influence over that either well i think well, they're trying to and go ahead i'm sorry Pierre. no no i think i think the bigger issue is his connections to the cia and the intelligence agency the bigger issue is that he has the ear of the executive of the white house i mean that's the honest truth if you, if you really look at what he's been talking about, he's been talking about AI, he's been talking about vaccines, he's been talking about mind control. All these documents, WikiLeaks, everything that WikiLeaks has dumped, he's been talking about it for 20 years. And then now it's been confirmed. Vault 7, Marble, the back doors to Apple, Apple moving its location to China, the China credit score, all these things, everything that's coming together. And he's had all this information for the last 20 years. That's why they shut his channel down, terminated all the videos, over thousands and thousands of videos, going back, talking about all these things. They had to do it. And everybody's like, oh, you know, Alex Jones is, you know, he's, he's part of the system. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the secret society guys. I've been saying it for two years now. But he's not suicidal. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not. He sees what's happening. And he's not about, oh, I want to kill the planet, just like Trump. Trump is, Trump is part of the secret society. I mean, if we think that they're not, we're... we're right. There's different factions going on right now. Exactly. A, a war between the different factions. And, um, and I think they took out... Population, total depopulation to 500 million, and there's that other side that says you can use AI, you can use this technology, 
you can have, you know, life extension, whatever shit. And go into the future Star Wars type shit. You know, SG-1 type stuff. That's the side that they're on. They don't want that other, let's kill 90% of the population and have the world to ourselves. You know what I mean? Trump and, and the Alex Jones types want the Jets. You see what I'm saying? They want that. The other side wants Alicia. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I can see it, yeah. That's what they want. They want oh my God, that's like a um, ideological difference. I definitely thought I I thought I I thought Alex Jones was skillfully removed from the chessboard. They've gone through a yeah. well, through the same methodology that you were discussing earlier through the newspapers seeding the idea about him being crazy. Now, when everybody repeats one of the more crazy things or ludicrous things Alex Jones says, like somebody said to me in a bar, you know, oh, you mean the gay frogs guy? Because they've said that and they've repeated that over and over again. And you can show that little clip of him ranting. Except if you dig a little bit deeper, you discover the science behind what he was talking about is actually, is actually accurate. So yeah. when you're dealing with something like the newspapers, when they're dissecting somebody's soundbite, you think they would be charged with the responsibility of like illuminating the public with knowledge and say, hey, even though he may be delivering it in this way, this is in fact transpiring. But no, they didn't. They take the opportunity to systematically marginalize him. So for this move that they've already calculated moves ahead, that they're actually now when we remove him, he will not be a martyr. He will not ascend to the cross and have throngs of his followers. What we now have is even more division and dissension. Oh, you mean the gay frogs, dude? But he's almost right all the time. Sure, he's right all the time. Because the thing is, as much as I would love to think that human beings are good, thoughtful creatures, it could be solved with five minutes of looking up on this little neck of wafer, but we don't do that. What do we do? We'd rather argue with each other. And as we argue, we do this thing, we're distracted. You know? Ugh. I think um, my analysis of him has changed with my experience that he's actually motivating people to either debunk him or to validate that what he's saying is true. So they have to do the light work. He just says it and either people believe it or they research it and they either debunk it or they go, well, I can't debunk this. And I think that's good. We need that. You know what I think happens? If you, if, you honestly, if you honestly go back to all his videos, I mean, I've, been, I've, I've known about Alex Jones for over 10 years. When I saw, first started seeing him, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> then he started talking about the articles he was reading. And then I started going to look at the articles he was talking about. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, these are mainstream articles. This is not like, it's his delivery that people don't like. The craziness stuff. You know the, the Joker, but once you if you get past that delivery part, the face, and you actually look at the paperwork that he's talking about or the articles that he's talking about, you're like, okay, this guy is crazy, but this is crazy. Like, he may be acting crazy, but this article from you know Washington Post is crazy. You know, or this article from Reuters is crazy, or this article from you know uh, some tech. The magazine is crazy. But you it's actually I mean? the truth. It's the truth. Is it it's the he's, truth. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a performer no. to get your attention. Let me ask you a question. I've thought he does that to dilute and to devalue the truth to which he claims that he's sharing. What do you think? Do you think it's just theater to get attention to it? So I've always thought he's been no, a disinformation I, agent. I really have. And I think he has secret Jesuit ties. That's been my thought. I think what happened is this. He's always been in the know. We obviously know that his family, part of his family, CIA. You guys know that, right? No. Yeah. He started admitting it the last year. And I knew that before that. You know what I mean? I knew this way before. I knew that he had content, but he started admitting it within the last year. When you look at his videos, he would say, I have certain family. My father, I was in Hollywood. 
and I was offered. And then within the last week, he started really talking. So he's spilling his guts about being weird, a Hollywood CIA connection. Oh, CIA is in everything. Yeah, clowns in America. Of course, because, you know, everybody that ever does a a movie has to consult with the CIA. That's where you get all these futuristic whatever. But he started actually talking about when he was in Hollywood, how they offered him money, millions of dollars, his own show, the Glenn Beck show, it was supposed to be him. Like, he started talking. And that's, and then I know he was part of the secret societies because of the hand gestures he would make when he would talk. Yeah, yeah. Like he's not going to go too far. He's up, but then it gets to a point that when you know, when they're showing you and telling you, um, this is this is the plan. This is a master plan. This is what we're going to do. We're going to destroy content. We're gonna kill off a certain amount of people. We're gonna de- we're gonna we're gonna change the demographics and the uh, of a certain countries like Europe, right? Because remember, the plan of what's happening in Europe. This was a plan that was in 2000. He said this. He was told this, and you read it in the Yip on plan. You read it in all these co- that were public. It's not like it's in hiding. You can find this online. They need a more compliant working class. I'm sorry? No, go on, please. No, like all these plans were out. He just pointed it out. So he starts telling you this and that, what he knows, who he's connected to, who his family is. And then you have the factions, the factions that they don't want to kill the population. It's okay. Like the Dutch bank, right? You know about the Dutch bank. Yeah. God, that thing's so upsetting to watch. So you, so when you have people like this, when you have people like this talking about, they didn't care, right? Their mind, their mind was set in making money, being powerful, all these things, enjoying the luxuries of, of drugs, sex, alcohol, all these things. But then you get to a point that you become human again. You know what I mean? And you realize, wait a minute, what I've been doing has been leading me to total annihilation. Am I really interested in killing off a bunch of people? Am I really interested in burning my own house? You know, you come to that, I call it the Jesus movie. (laughs) <laughs> I call it the Jesus moment. Yeah, come am the I, Jesus moment. There you go. And I'm, am I interested in cutting my veins? You come to that moment. And, you know, everybody says, you know, oh, Alex Jones is, is a, it's a Knights of Malta. Whatever. He can be from the Knights of Malta. He can be from, you know, the Scottish Rite. He can be from over here. He doesn't want to annihilate 90% of the population. Bottom line. No. He has the kids. A- yeah. The AI is going to do it far more mercifully. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you get to oh. a point. What do you want? Do you want to kill people? Or do you want to kill people? <clears throat> let, me, let me ask you. Do you think it's this deplatforming with Alex Jones? Think it's going to stop with him? We're all going to go. You think this hoopla is going to get him reinstated, or do you think they're just going to move him? Full, they're going to go full steam ahead. Um, no, they're going to they're going to go they're going to crush him. They're, they're going to go full they're going to go full steam ahead, aren't they? They're going to tell him we're going to crush you, meaning or cash out, go live on an ice island, and watch the show. Yeah, uh, they're coming. They're coming for everybody. Yeah. They're coming for everybody. Trust me, it's gonna be China. The whole, the whole, the reason they've been praising China for ten years and calling it oh the most capitalistic blah blah blah. That's, I don't know if you've ever watched the news cycle promoting China, promoting China, promoting China. How I mean, don't you remember China. Mitt Romney? Rit, not Mitt Romney was basically saying that's the model we want. He doesn't. He doesn't say. Oddly enough, he doesn't say Singapore, which set about a goal. 
20 years ago that have the richest citizenry on the planet. And if you look at two of the cities there, that one in four of their citizens now are actual millionaires. They actually achieved that goal. They don't set aside goals like that there. They don't want to use that as a great example. They don't want to look at what they've been doing in South Korea. I mean, like when I went to Seoul, it was like freaking awesome what they've been doing there. No, they don't. They want to use this despotic example that generates the most unhappiest looking group of guys. If you get off a plane and you got to work with them, I look, I'm just saying, I'm calling it like I see it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what they want for us. That's what they want for us. They want us having jobs where they got to put nets outside of wherever we work. So we don't want to kill ourselves. Pretty soon they're going to have something plugged well, into the back of our heads, but we can't do that. I think I, I think I really think that it's even beyond that. It's beyond that. It, okay, so there's a there's a there's a, a hotel, and I did a video and I talked about. It. There's a hotel in China, I think it's Japan that is completely run by robots. Yeah. The whole hotel. So what they want is, and I remember and remember I talked about the dream that I had of 2030 that I saw AI running everything and the population. I didn't see anybody under the age of 30 and I didn't see anybody over the age of 60. And mostly were women, very few men. And this was Japan, the dream that That sounds like Japan now. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, the population just was, say it. <laughs> okay, well, the population <laughs> was a quarter of what Japan has now. That was the population of Japan, a quarter of what I see now. And it was flashing 2030, 2030. Everything was AI, holograms, robots, um, even the play. I, there was a theater, and the theater was, <coughs> was AI playing at the actors. And I think that's what they want. They want the, the elimination of a certain amount of the population, right? And then maintain. A certain amount, hmm. controllable amount. It is most Which logical means. if you think about it. You you Which can actually. Well, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. Oh man, holy cow! I feel like I'm contributing to the AI nightmare, but hey, whatever. And if, <laughs> you, and if you think about it, 2030, right? If you look at um, Edgar Case, oh, you know love Edgar him, Case. love him. Read all his books. I go to the um, Edgar Casey A R E place down in like uh, Virginia Beach. I love those guys there. Oh my God, we're following a family for like uh, seventeen generations now. It's supposed to be a reincarnation of this one family. It's one of their projects they've been doing. It's really cool. And if you look at Baba Vanka, she talks about. I mean, she gives she gave you predictions all the way till uh, two thousand five hundred and eight about what she saw. The years. And she talks about the caliphate by 2030 in Europe. Uh, I mean, and they all have the same, they all, they're all seeing the same future. Can I, I gotta, about, okay. Uh, how do they not see what's going on in Europe? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to say this. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the one Jamook in the room. All right. There's three people here that maybe don't got a horse or a dog to, dog in that European for Europeans race here. But how do these people not see what's happening to them? I mean, seriously, you have Etrogen, the leader of Turkey that goes about who, who literally says we're, I'm, you, does cursing offend anybody here? Please let me know. I'll try to use it. Okay, good. He said he basically says we're gonna fuck you out of existence. He, he, he did this. I, I have the video on my channel. I'm like, how do, how do you not hear a dude say that and go, every single one of you, gone, out, now, rounding you up, good, you go there. Hey, I, I, you, I'll give you here. Here's a computer. Go work it out for yourselves. There's an internet. Whatever we got, you can have, but you're going to make it over there. We got it over here. We'll send consultants. They'll bill you. They'll make it for you over there. What the hell? Seriously? Oh, my God. Because that would be a conspiracy theory, even if they, uh, they did act it out. It's like, I, we don't believe in conspiracy theories. <laughs> but the person just but said it. It's funny. It's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I mean, he literally said it. 
He said, that's my plan, guys. And he goes, yeah, bros, this is what we're going to do. He's like, like, oh, my God. And, and like, you know, okay, it's almost, okay, all right. See, this is where I'm going to get a little street here, a little bit, a little teeny tiny bit. And the thing is, like, you know, God damn it, if I just can't have a little bit of contempt for them, they're going to let somebody move in and muscle them like that on their own freaking lands like that. And then they're too busy squibbling, arguing, while, like, they got, like, I tell you right now, even right now in the town I live in, oh fuck that! Even if it was in like Queens, if there were fifty, if if Queens found out there was like a hundred guys from Brooklyn raping chicks out of control in Queens, we'd have a wall between Brooklyn and Queens like that, okay? And there would be checkpoints at every single highway and street between Brooklyn and Queens in New York City, and we'd be like, we got to see what's going on here, guys. I. I'm ranting. I've been back. I'm I'm not originally born in America. I'm originally born in um, the north of England in Durham. I've worked in England a lot, and I've gone back and forth. I lived in Germany. I worked for IBM there for a year, and I like Europe. Europe you, I go to Europe to experience Europe, to experience Europeans, because that's their little gestation and the manifestation of their culture. I go to Morocco. I go to South Africa. I go to the Congo, and I go to Rwanda because I want to experience that. And see, I think that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I just do. And like, does that make you a horrible person to want that? Does it make me a horrible person? Because I've been going back to, and when I go back to Europe now, I swear to God, when I get, when I look at London, it does not look like London. It just doesn't. Is that a horrible thing to say? It, it, it doesn't. I'm sorry, dude, you don't look like, you don't look English. You don't look like any English person I've seen. I, where's fucking Mary Poppins? I spent $1,200 to come here with my kids to look and find fucking Mary Poppins. What am I getting? I'm getting Gunga Din, Alibaba, everybody else but a freaking Mary Poppins. God damn it. I just want some goddamn Mary Poppins. <laughs> hey, that's, that's raised. That's xenophobe. What are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> I just want me some Mary Poppins, man. I just want to see. Oh, come on. I go to England to see English people and pick Super Nazi. White I'm sorry. Is my social credit score going to go to hell now? <laughs> <laughs> right now, as I did that little rant, if this is on YouTube, Three headhunters who are probably working their hardest for me just said, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's called freedom, baby. It's called freedom, baby. Okay. It's called freedom and it's the truth. And we're free to tell the truth, except for if your name is Alex Jones. If your name is Alex Jones, you're not free to tell the truth. Even if you have a 100% track record. Hey, does anybody double check what this dude says? Nah, 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 nah. Let's make fun of the fact that he has these epic jiggle fits like that. I'm like, seriously. I look at him, dude. I'm like, dude, do you own a mirror? I'm going to send you a bow flex. You're in the public eye. I swear to God, a public, you're in Hollywood. How does not one of these Hollywood level public trainers have got their mitts on you and force fed you juice for 30 freaking days and strapped your ass to a treadmill and got some chick in leather with a cat of nine tails just whipping you until you run your ass into some sort of decent shape. Dude, seriously. But enough about Alex Jones, you know, but like, yeah, you know, freedom. Yeah, we need that. I'm sorry, I get a little excited. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna calm down now. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, hey, I think that the censorship, the uh, political correctness, it's, it's bad. It, um, the what? Political correctness. Uh -huh. Political correctness. It's pretty bad. Uh, the reason it is, is because people mask what's actually going on and, uh, they don't realize that it doesn't have to be that way. For example, uh, Burp, burping and farting, they're just natural things that happen. If it happens without your, you know, you're not controlling it, you just say, excuse me, and that's fine. That's, that's politeness. That's not political correctness. Everyone's getting uh, those things confused. Is nature does its own thing, and what political correctness is doing is making what's natural what's just what naturally occurs as something that shouldn't that it has to be sanitized it has to be um i wouldn't even call it humanized it's just 
has to be a certain way because that's just the way the society all acts as far as what it wants naturalness to be. Huh. It can't be natural anymore. You can't you can't have your arm armpit hair growing out of your arms if you're a woman or you have to shave your legs. Uh, you have to manscape as well if you if you got a beard and whatever. That's oh, just, screw that. Oh my god. It's like that. The um the um the the the, the, the holy cow. Sorry. Oh I'm gonna share. Oh yeah, she had armpit hair, but she was so freaking hot that chick from Columbia with the uh hallucinogenic stuff I did down there under those circumstances. See, it depends, you know. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shame. I think they produce I think what you're talking about, the byproduct of this thing they're foisting onto us is shame. And shame is the greatest tool. Shame is what keeps you down, cows your eyes, keeps you embarrassed. Shame. You don't have. You don't look this way. You don't. You're not built this way. You don't smell this way. You don't have this color hair. You don't got blue out of there or whatever it is. You got to be ashamed. You don't got enough money or whatever it is. You got to be ashamed. That's their biggest tool. That's their best tool. We stop being ashamed with each other. We just like kind of hug each other. Just go up to somebody and just hug them maybe. But I did that once in Manhattan. You know the cops came and it just it got messy. <laughs> and you're right. Uh, the natural tendency is to hug. You're gonna you're gonna just do this a lot because that's the cradle position, and you know that you're hugged by uh, someone who's protecting you, and you're asleep. You've got this, you know. It's just you know you could lay on lay on someone who's protective, nurturing, and you don't have that anymore. You so you show those shi- signs. They're they're signs of submission, weakness. They're not. They're signs of strength, of protection. It's just. They, they inverted it. Anything that, that was about protection is about being weak. Anything that shows you uh, being weak um, is actually just misinterpreted as being strong. It's a, it's a show. It's, it's opposite of everything. And that's just the way things are now. Everything's inverted because that's how they want it to be. It's easier to control when, you, when, you, when the truth is a lie and the lie is a truth. No one knows what's real, what's fake, what's anything anymore. So they don't know how to act. They don't know how to, who to fight, how to fight. And they're just lost. And you see that theme, uh, predict, predictive programming, lost, um, walking dead, and a lot of things like that. It's, it's all there. Uh, Stephen King, Stephen King, if, uh, word, word etymology. Anything with N, uh, I wish I could remember, but also, um, well, you King said Stephen King, yeah, Stephen King, um, uh, I wish I could remember, but, but he, one of his biggest works is Dark Tower, and one of his biggest characters, Roland, which I named my son after, but it's different because he, instead of, um, you know, his character is about, I forgot the face of my father, um. If you don't forget the face of your father, then you just realize how much tremendous strength you are because that's where fighting is. That's the lost. It's the people who don't protect the mother, people who leave the family, people who want to divorce, who don't want to protect the mother. And you, when that happens, you see the mother just crying out, hurt, uh, very painful. Uh, but the kids, she'll always love the kids. It doesn't matter what the kids do. The mother always loves the kids. Um, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's just it's very difficult to, to, for kids to handle when they, they realize that because they always want to protect the mother when they grow up and you'll always see them protecting the mother. And that's, just a natural thing but now you just see that they they just leave the family dynamic they're raised by the state the government that's what the government wants to break up the family dynamic oh god that nauseates me how that's so coming i was watching <clears throat> this promo on msnbc and this woman some curly haired of course they all hide behind these very agitated oh. women of color and they all get very upset and they just could, she said, it's the state's duty to raise children. And she said, quite clearly, she said, children do not belong to their parents. They belong to the government in which they are, the government in which they're born to. Which, 
the, the notion itself is completely ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I think we lost the PA there. Yeah, she, uh, text there to see if she'll come back. Um, if if not, we can end it. I mean, it's it's it was a good it's a good conversation. Uh, it's uh yeah. yeah we could end it okay do you want to end it uh we'll, we'll see if she replies back she might have just lost connection um but yeah it seems like uh i don't know what do you call it it would Uh, too much sanitization is bad. Uh, one of the things in my my uh, experience was, I I always clean everything. I don't eat off the floor, and you hear a lot of science and, and research saying, it, "Is it true if it touches the ground? How much time do you have before it gets too dirty and it'll get you sick or whatever?" My wife does it all the time, and the mother, and we realize that that the child crawls around. You know, all this dirt. Good, dirt's actually good for you. I think and, um, resistant. Yep. And uh, too much sanitization is actually poison. If you look at even water, you, you distill water, you drink it, it just, everything absorbs into it and you lose resources. There's stuff in your body. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not healthy. It's not, it's not natural. And, uh, it's just the, the process of cleaning, making a mess, cleaning, making a mess. I think that's, that's just part of life. That's why we keep doing these uh, routines, these rituals. Is It's just something that, that has to keep going, um, even if you're not consciously aware of it. But then they, they made the ritual something else entirely. It's, it's not both. It's not the balance. It's just one or the other. And um, balance is such a big thing. Um, and we're, we're so out of balance in the world now. Whatever it is, it's just out of balance. Any topic, any situation, out of balance. Do you think it's that way? By, I think it's that way on, by design. I think the challenge is to get it back into balance. Yeah. And it's a struggle back and forth that keeps us occupied with this thing, we call, this experience we call life. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to jump off for a minute. Can you call sure. me back? I, um, I'm going to go check in on the kids. Yeah. Uh, you could just, you could just uh, click the stop video or something. And what is that? Back. I'll just put you in the waiting room. That'll work. Don't worry about it. I'll put you in the waiting room. Okay. Right. Oh, that may. Uh, anyways. Um. Sorry about the audio and connection. PA uh, always seems to have an issue with uh, her connection when she's on. Um, and uh, Common Sense Avenger left. He just need. Uh, she, he did, this is the first time using it. Uh, I think you just need to keep fighting. That's all it is. You don't have to win. You don't want to win. You don't want to lose. You just want to just, it's always a, a, a teetering back and forth. And that makes things okay. That makes things where um, you're not going to enter stagnation. You're not going to enter a lot of um, things that get too uh, stale. If you think about it, and you can do experiments, imagine time not existing, that all it is is movement or non-movement. When we see movement, uh, and you can think relativity, but it's not necessarily just relativity, um, you see a process where aging, in the sense that how we perceive aging, doesn't exist. Naturally, uh, if you see something just left alone on its own, you see it just forgotten, crumbling away, becoming uh, untaken care of, and just 
uh, if it's it rusts or it rots, whatever it is, if you don't take care of it, it's going to deteriorate. So it's it's trying to make sure that things are constantly moving. I mean, even tweeting, even doing something little is something. Um, don't make it a routine, but make everything that you do purposeful. So if you do make a routine that's purposeful, and you realize that there's a purpose to it, and everything has purpose to it, if you look at the right signs, uh, you, you really won't fail. You won't, you won't give up either. Uh, that's the amazing thing, is we don't give up. And that's what keeps us going. That's what keep, makes us amazingly strong. Um, and people don't like the powers that think that they're powerful. They realize that they're not in power. They can be controlled, but we don't control them. Um, because that would mean we would win. That would cause stagnation. And that would end the game too quickly. We want the game to last as long as we can until everyone's ready to end the game together. Um, it's just so much to say. And it's, it's going to fall on empty ears. That's okay. It's not a race. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a marathon without a time timer, I guess you could say. It just keeps going. And... Uh, that's family. You could see it in any family or uh, you could look at it through the military. Uh, leave no man behind, leave no brother behind, whatever. Uh, you don't leave them behind. It's the same mentality. They're not through war, just life. And uh, yeah. So I don't know if they'll come back on. I think uh, PA lost connection in uh, Common Sense Avenger. Uh, he's checking on the kids, but we'll, we'll give it a few more minutes. He might not know how to come back on. Um, it would just be kind of a conclusion. I think a lot of people, maybe some people, would be interested in my experience. And... Um, most people won't believe it. So some of the things that I would say, usually I'm pretty transparent. Now, if I'm not trying to be transparent now, which I am sorry, is um, uh, has nothing to worry about. There's, it's a, Beautiful, amazing cycle. It's an amazing cycle. And um, whatever it is, the shadows, the trickery, um, you can swipe it away. It doesn't have to be there. And it's such a... Wonderful experience, humbling experience. You uh, don't forget to breathe because you need to find your way back and there's a reason why you need to come back. And uh, when you come back, you either learn what you need to learn and that's it, or you need to go back to learn more and remember the lessons and to do what you're meant to do. Um, it's, it's everyone has a different path. Everyone has is different of who they are. In the end, it won't matter, uh, good or bad. It won't matter. Uh, there would be more wonderful when it does matter.
man, patience. I said patience is so key. Um, and you got to look through signs throughout your whole life. The reason I don't think that there's, there is um, movement and what we call time, it will keep going. You'll see different, different versions of the same cycle. And I was wrong before. And that's what you also got to realize is that when you go into it, you surrender yourself only to the mother because the mother will protect you, will teach you what she needs to teach you. And you'll find what you, you are supposed to do. Um, and, but you have to be willing to take that. Take that realization. If you don't, then it's just not an experience. It's not, uh, you didn't learn the lesson. It's a teaching, it's a teaching vine, teaching medicine, just like your mother teaches you. Uh, you'll experience, and it may be different for men and women, but you'll experience your, your own cycle. You're, you're the father, you're the son, you're the brother, you're the husband um, and you go through every motion and you realize all those motions were meant to be the, the curling up the crawling the standing the stumbling the walking um, the way you eat what you eat how you eat it um, the unashamedness of how you eat things of what you put in your mouth and all the other stuff and what you realize is the mother doesn't care she just loves you it doesn't matter and when you feel that you just when you feel the hurt that the collective of, of mother nature feels uh, you want to take that burden away if you want to know who you are you will want to take that burden away that's why everyone is is needed and is wanted and that's why it's patient she'll carry that burden for as long as it takes but as the father who is more powerful you're going to take away that burden and you're going to realize it's nothing at all the poison you willingly take because it doesn't affect you at all the pain the, the hurt you don't need it um, sleep you don't need sleep uh, I don't need sleep we don't need sleep I should just say we we don't need sleep you can sleep if you want to but you don't need it just like uh, you can shave if you want to but you don't need to uh, just a whole bunch of things you realize you don't need to do but if you want to do it then go on ahead uh, as long as you realize why you don't need to do it it's, it's, it's it is life changing. Um, because before I had ideas, I had strategies, and uh, it's broken down to just something very simple. Everything is broken down so simply. Certain words, play on words, the signs that you you see from when in yourself as you've applied it and how it all happened and came to be mine is I've never cared about winning I just wanted to enjoy the game the experience and uh, therefore I'm I was I'm not sure if I was made to fit or I set myself to, to fit in this mold or the person or the being that I'm supposed to be because winning if you want balance you can't you can't always want to be winning you can't always be willing to tip the scales in your favor to win by cheating you do everything you can <laughs> to win legitimately it's such a funny concept um, but you don't really care about winning if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. As long as you're you're still always playing, and it's not just play; it's it's work. It's, it's just a mix. And uh, 
you'll get different personifications when you want to or ever need to. You realize you don't need need to. Uh, and I think it can be scary for some. I think a lot of differences. I mean, the the one fundamental factor is is the mother nature part of it. Well, she's trying to to prep you and make you ready and you think you're ready but you realize you're not ready and she'll know when you're ready and uh it's 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 uh it's it's unimaginable i'm pretty creative I thought I was, but this experience was beyond creativity. It was, um, it was puzzles that just connected together, fit itself together. And I was going, oh my goodness, that was so simple. How did I not see that? How does no one see this? And it's getting, that's what's so hard. It's so simple that you just can't realize just how no one could see it, how you missed it all this time. Uh, but signs are there. Signs. It's important. Okay. Uh, so none of them have showed back up. Um, I am tired. This is really weird. I don't think I need to be tired. Uh, I think... I'll try sleeping. This is weird. I don't need sleep, but I want sleep. <laughs> the thing is, you just realize, once you realize you're strong, because you're strong, because you, you want to take that burden, that you're, that's what makes you strong. You don't need anything. Um, mother will provide, and you will provide and protect mother. And it's just a circle that keeps going, and doesn't answer questions, which is a good thing. I mentioned before, it's not about finding the answers because that means it's the end. It's about keeping the questions going. And searching and for acting and for finding. Um, okay, that was it. Uh, I'm sorry for the audio issues. I think it was a YouTube thing for DLive. I think it was fine. Um, PA had some audio issues. Uh, I would love to hurt her, but I also loved hearing from Common Sense Adventure. He's got a lot of, a lot of good things to say too. Um, so thank you for tuning in and um, I'll see you guys later.